Hey, how's it going? It's Brian from Bee's Music Shop. And today I'm playing around something. We had a original Fox Tone Machine traded in. It's one of the original fuzzes released in 1971. Around the store, there's plenty of clones. Like we stock hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pedals. I just got in my brain. I'm like, I wonder what it's like to put them right head to head against an original one. So I thought while I had it in my possession, it'd be super fun. So let's check it out. Let's let's put them head to head against the originals. I really want to point out the Foxy Tone Machine from Warm. I love how it's in an original style enclosure. It's got the fuzz on it. Mine is more of like a hand hammered black. I wondered at first if it was like a black fuzz that the fuzz came off, but apparently mine was just always hammered paint. So it shows its age of being what, 50 years old? It's in pretty good shape. The only thing I think I did to it when I got it was I replaced the battery clip. This one is running off a battery. Just to be transparent, the rest of these are running off a of Strymon Zuma. I understand that fuzz can sound different on a battery. This has a brand new battery in it. If you're gonna buy this, you're probably not running off a battery anyway. So let's see what it sounds like. But I do love the Foxy Tone Machine being so much an homage to the original. And the other thing I really like, why I grabbed the 3699, this is very well documented, but I do enjoy that Steve Rittinger, who works for a Vets Corp that owns Dan Electro and designs a lot of the pedals and all the fun guitars, and I love Dan Electro stuff. It has such a place in my heart of fun things. I've owned a lot of them through the years. Everything except when someone brings me one for a neck adjustment and I have to take the neck off five times. I don't like that, but they did change that this year. I saw at the NAMM show when I was interviewing the guy, they went to to a traditional spot to adjust the neck. Thank you. From the bottom of my little heart, someday I won't have to do that as much. But Steve Rittinger, that works for Vets, designed this when he was young. I think he was even like a teenager, although I don't have it open in front of me. But he was very young. He worked for the Fox Tone Company. He designed this circuit and then later went on to do a Vets and make the Cool Cat distortion and, and all these, uh, you know, the bacon and eggs and all these fun things he was involved with. But this is his original pedal. So I think it's great that they make a version of it. And you know, 3699 is Fox on a telephone. It's the original Fox company's last four digits of their phone number. As much as like this, and I love I love Warm, Nothing on Warm it is such a direct clone of the original. This is sort of its its descendant. And for, for the first of this, I'm just going to do the Foxy Tone Machine and then we'll go to that. So I'm going to lay this down so we're less confused. I'm going to put it up like this, kind of ugly, and then we'll talk about that. Well, let's start off with the Warm. Before we get going, I just want to remind you, like, comment, subscribe. If we can get you a cat t-shirt, a cat pedal, oh, we send you a free cat sticker. Cat toys, hit us up, beesmusicshop.com. We love the support. What you do is what makes us able to do what we do. So thank you. All right, before we hear any of these, I got to figure out how to get my clean tone. So let's switch over just because I trust this one to be a little more true bypass. Let's come over here so you can hear an accurate clean tone. I am playing today my nightmare Barbie pink cower gripping, and I'm playing it into uh, El Capasan and Strymon Iridium. But here's my bridge pickup. <laughs> Here's both pickups. And here's my neck pickup. So with these two and all of them here today, I'm going to be trying to mirror the knobs, but I'm going to use my ears to kind of put them closer to each other because I don't trust that 12 o'clock is 12 o'clock on both these pedals. They're, they're their own thing. So let's start off with the Foxy Tone Machine. We've got volume, the octave switch, and then tone. And I think, yeah, right now I got them all 12 o'clock. Go ahead and swip that octave switch. That's definitely the octave on. It's just gnarly. That's awesome. So, all right. Gets way too bright. Gets way too dark. We can crank up the sustain. The 
This thing is just fun. We've had it for like three or four months and I haven't put it out for sale yet because I just keep screwing around with it. So it'll be on, it'll be up for sale at some point. I just, I got to have my moment in the sun with it, which might be partly today. Let's try the Foxy Tone Machine head to head. <laughs> All right, we're definitely brighter, so let's bring it back. So this one goes left to right. This one goes up down. For all I know, this one's rotated and not original. It might have went up and down original. Who knows? So I think that's no octave. All right, let's just try and go back and forth now with both of them on. You have the sustain all the way up on that one. So sustain on, octave on. So there's the... Get them close. I feel like this one's got to go brighter. They're close. There's definitely a different, this one doesn't sound older. No, well, now it sounds brighter. Like that one's a little more forward. This one's a little more subtle to me, but. Boy, they are close. Close, close, close. All right, let's try the 3699. Let's see if I can do this. You ready? Am I going to die? All right. So now on this side, I've got wired up the 3699 from Dan Electro. So this is, again, Steve Rittinger helped make the original Fox Tone Machine happen. I think of this as the child. This is the child. So let's put everything 12 o'clock. Let's bring the distortion back on the, uh, the original. So let's go. Let's hear the original again. Let's hear the 3699. I think this one's closer. A little bit louder in the volume, so we'll turn to...
I think I got it. That one's way closer. If anything, there's a little bit of mid-boost. Or no, oh, it's stock. What if I put it as a mid-boost? Oh, I like that. Yeah, this one's, the original is kind of hollow. One thing I'll say about the uh, 3699 that I think about every time I see one of these Dan Electro pedals is if you ever look at them and, and uh, they, they, they have kind of like some, some nicks on them and the paint's like scuffed. They look like they're old. One time I actually sent someone one of these and I got back a scathing email about how dare I sell a pedal as new in such terrible, terrible shape. And I really sheepishly, nicely just had to be like, you know, they're relict pedals, right? I just got back this like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It makes me giggle every time because it's the only pedal I really know of that comes relict. If you didn't know that before you opened a box, of course you would be like, what the hell? This pedal looks like it's 20 years old. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna turn this mid boost off. I actually like the mid boost and it'll probably keep it on, but it makes it so different than the original. All right, let's turn the gain all the way up and this guy. Boy, that one is close. That is close, close, close. This is pretty exciting. Really had been falling in love with this thing. And then it's got in my mind thinking like, there's other Fox Stones machines in here and there's the one that the guy made. And then there's the one that looks really like it. And my brain's just going. I feel like this is a common guitar player, especially in the pedal community, like itch thing. Like I just gotta, I gotta do science, right? Like I gotta experiment. I gotta see what all these little things are. I gotta see if these three very similar things are indeed similar. Which is just like, why, objectively? But this is, you know, why anything? All right, I think I'm going to do one more switcheroo, and I want to put these two against each other and see what, they, what the differences are there. We're going we're gonna to take the Fox Tone machine. We're going to put it back on its little shelf. I'm having some fun with this thing. I think it's kind of cool. It's just so neat to come across these vintage effects and just kind of, like, they're always a little cranky and grumpy. But all right, let's put this against this. All right, so now we are head-to-head. -head. Modern reissues, 3699, warm, foxy tone box. And then we just got like grandpa fox tone machine over here like, you kids, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be over here resting. I'm old, I don't wanna go out anymore. Please leave me in the house. Take me to the bar. I've been in enough bars, kids. I just wanna stay home and read the paper. I just wanna sit home and read conspiracy theories on Facebook. That's all I wanna do, cause I'm old. Whoa, got kinda real there for a second. So let's have the kids squabble. Turn the octave off on both these. I just want to hear if I can do some chords more with it. Oh, 
that's awesome. I think I could do that all day. They sound so similar on chords, but different on single notes. Man, that's fascinating. I think at the end of this, this is where I'm landing. 3699, that's the vintage original. I really do like that mid boost too. Boy, like that mid boost. You know, the original sounds, which is objectively still awesome, but that's a cool flavor on that guy. 3699 sounds, I think, to my ears, the closest. Foxy Tone Box, right behind it, very close. Lots of style points. If we're giving style points, the Foxy Tone Box. He's got this weird enclosure. They're doing a really good job with these. They just nail the enclosure, and they're doing a lot of stuff with weird enclosure. You know, we did the Tone Bender and the Ringer Bringer, the, the Figure Fugger Rigger Bringer. We did that one. You know, they just kill the enclosures so much. And the circuits are solid. I mean, this is not, just because this pedal is slightly closer to that one, this one still sounds incredible. It's the future and everything's incredible. These are all, like, killer. And, you know, this guy... Needs a battery. There's no AC input. I would really be hesitant to run this guy on a power supply or to take it anywhere. It's, I don't use it a lot here because a pedal this age, you know, when I got it, the nine volt was kind of deteriorating the lead and a few things. And they take a little love and care to keep them together. These things, I could just throw them outside. It's snowing today. I could throw them outside in the snow and leave them there for an hour and come back in here and I'd be shocked if they didn't work. You know, there's something to be said for that in a world. I want to chug just one more. So that's it. That's really our look at these guys. I hope you had some fun kind of playing mix and match and, uh, you know, like, hey, let's hear three things that are supposed to sound almost identical, sound almost identical. It's uh, fun to do science. As always, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. If you're like, I think you're wrong, this one sounded better or that one sounded better. I like to be challenged. You know, I can take it. I can take it. All your mean comments about things. I cry. I do cry a lot. If we can get you a guitar, a cat t-shirt, a pedal, a catnip toy, anything, beesmusicshop.com, hit us up. Your support makes the world a difference to us and helps us to be able to do stuff like this and live our lives. Thank you so much for watching.